of the turtle, right? And you're like this, and he pushes you too hard away, and you're trying to stay away from these legs, and he's scissoring and coming up, and now you're here like this, okay? That's another scenario. Might be from a knee cut, right? You're here, you're trying to pass him over something, you cut, and as he's coming up, you're dropping him, you're right here. So I'm gonna ask you to do, because what's gonna happen is, we'll attach them later to the other side, but I'm not gonna ask you to go both sides. Because what ends up happening, most players, is you marry a game one way and you're passing to a different set of systems on the other side so that they intertwine really nice. And that's how you build your game. So your leg cut might be this way, but then you might do a step over on the other side and, oh, you float to the other side. So they start to mix up. They're different, okay? It's just like you tell me, like, I, I know you, unless you're really going to commit to this and, like, do this, like, 12 hours a day, you know, it's almost like writing. You're right-handed. Yeah, I get it. You could eventually write with your left hand, but you better practice for hours and hours and hours and hours. So you're going to be dominant on one side. So right now, let's play it to the side that you feel comfortable on the head and arm. We're spinning to the back side. I will give you some pointers. It's up to you if you want to follow them. I will tell you if you do not follow them, you will have some issues with high-level players and how they recover on you. You're like this. And I'm telling you that for whatever reason, you feel this uh, necessity to get behind them. That could be from IBJJ, that you want to get back there to score and get your hooks in. So you're playing this point system game. It might be that you're a great rear naked choker, or you feel like, you know what? I don't feel comfortable up here because I can't get any attachments to him. He's starting to take my hand off his chin because he's got a double grip on it. So I'm going to lose the chin line. So why would I even stay there? Because he's going to take his head out. Right, so that could be one, or I could feel like he's just too big, and I'm going, you know, my chances are better to get behind him. Okay, it could go in a lot of different scenarios, but in this scenario, we're going behind him. We couldn't collect anything up here. I feel like I'm losing his chin. I know I'm going to lose him now. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a couple of things. When you come in here and you're ready to spin around the back, try your best to transfer your head and attach to this hip. Don't do this. You're coming up like this and there's no attachment. As soon as you make this turn, he's gonna shoulder roll on you. And you had no pressure on that back hip, right? So have an emphasis that when you're transferring your head, you're pushing on that back hip. Your legs are generating into him, okay? They just can't be that he has no weight on him. I want him compressed against those back legs. Otherwise, he's gonna do other things on me, okay? He might do a, sit, a duck under onto this shoulder, Right, if I'm light on him, he's gonna duck under this shoulder and now I'm gonna go face first so he's gonna collect my ankle. Okay, so don't put your kneecaps right in front of him, otherwise he's gonna grab onto him. Okay, so I'm here and my knee lines are long and I'm pushing in and now I'm transferring to this side. Right, so I never relinquish that position here until I spin behind the back. I'm gonna tell you, they'll show you this. They'll show you to blade this over and make this turn. I hate that move because I taught fighting for a long time. So at one point, you're gonna tell me you're gonna blade this over and spin it to the backside and you're never gonna have connection on him? That's fake. That is like, that's just too sporty, okay? So my hand's not gonna blade over. I'm gonna be here and now I'm transferring my head over and I'm, I'm holding onto that neckline because I wanna know where my position is right now because he's got a couple of moves right now. He may sit back on that hip, but I had my hand position still in there, right? Until I got to the back side. So I'm here and now my hand's still in here. So now I've cleared this to this side, okay? Now I gotta take a gamble on this, right? Because now if he sits back, I can step it to the other side, but I still have my hand position in here and my head's driving. So now I'm gonna tell you what you got two counters on this right now. When you take this hand out, Right? I care about him sitting because I want to replace my head with this hand. So when I'm here and I'm taking this hand out, I understand that I wanted to replace this so that I can spin this behind him and now start making this transfer to collect this back quadrant. But to be careful at this. Now, when you take this hand out, your position to fight for that inside pocket is coming from this kneecap at this point. Because if you understand the problem solving, I want to have my safety valves in case something goes wrong on me. So right now, when I was here with this position, 
I, as I'm taking this, I'm okay to clear to the other side. If eight sits back on that hip line and I follow, I'm going to follow him on the, to the other side, right? But if I lose him too quick, right, and I was here, and I'm taking my safety out of the middle, right, I better be really to, ready to flip it this way off this knee line so that I can refight him to this pocket. And if he comes back to turtle, I'm back on the same grip. I hope that made sense because you better be able to follow that man with those counters. So you got to understand what the principles are in this whole thing of why I'm taking this out, why my head position was here, why I bladed this over. Because if, if early in the equation he was biting onto my hand, with the, I'm going to lose this neck. And now he's going to bury this thing. He's going to take it out. And now I'm not ready for my safety because he's framing so hard and he's got this knee. So if you understand this larger equation of how it's going to play out, it's not going to play out well for me because this guy's big and strong. He's a really good black belt. And I'm like taking my safeties out, but I better know my counters. Okay, so if he sits back, that's not where I'm going with it. I was trying to give you instruction of why you were doing the things you do and why your hand positions were at certain angles and what you were trying to do in, in a bigger picture. So I'm going to ask you, no more instruction on that. You're going to get behind him, and you're going to give me three insertions to the backside. So when you came in here, you don't know what your insertion is. You just did all of this. You came around this turn, now you flip this, and you come in here, and you're sitting on this back quad. I need you to start practicing three different ones on this. Sometimes we drive the kneecap this way, but sometimes when I'm already here, I don't know which one's coming in first. And now I've got my first hook in. Maybe it's that one. If I get this first hook, I'm going to have a focus on this shoulder, not this shoulder. I want to have a cross body that I'm on here right away fighting for this position. Later on, I could dig this once I have my hand position in here because then I can attach these together if I need to. I don't really care if you bite on at this point and you want to roll. I have your back. Right? I have you totally your back, so it's not realistic, but I'm going to fight for this position once my first hook comes in. So now you're here this time. Okay, so this time I want you, so the first one I did this hook. Second hook, I got to throw this guy, but now I better bury underneath here, right? Because right now I just cared about this. I'm not going to start taking my hand out and start transferring. My hand was here, I was here, right? So my first grip is to come right back underneath. Now you got to start fighting for your position. So once you have a wrist ride, you're going to transfer and get your other foot up. Okay, and then on the last one, you're coming in backwards this way. So your man bottled up, right, and you're here, and now you're taking his hand out, and he's not moving, and you understand you only have one inch to go. You're ready to counter this way, you're ready to counter this way, but I want his back, right? So I'm driving my kneecap in. Because if I start driving this way, right, I'm going to stay up for a second. We're driving him backwards because we're going to start collecting the ACL. But I'm ready to counter three different ways. I'm ready to counter this way, and I'm ready to counter this way. Okay, and then I can bring my kneecap, my hand position right in. So depending on where I am situated at this point, I can counter this every single way. You're not doing a duck under. That's not real. Okay, you have the issue with the shoulder roll, though. Okay, so now when you're here, make sure that you're protecting this pocket because you're going to be laid on this. You're going to have your hand position here, and now he's going to clear the back of the tricep, and now you're going here, or he's going to throw over on you. Okay, so let's go in there. You're going north-south, and you're coming around the back. So those are the only two. You do, you're doing three versions of it. First and hook, second hook, right? Outside hook, now you bury underneath. Right, so now you got your double grips, and now you're fighting to get this hand over either um, blade cut him here, or fight for your secondary hook in there. I don't think you're going to get the secondary hook in there, uh, because you're going to be here with double uh, double scoops under his armpits. You're going to have to break him down to get that in there, because he's going to be so bottled up, and your hand's going to be in here. You're going to have a hard time on that. Right? So I'd rather you fight for position of your hand underneath so you can get these connections on top. Okay? And then on the last one, you came around the turn. You did the transfers and you had a bigger picture. Try your best to visualize. Okay? Just don't go through the sequences. We got plenty of time. Let's perfect it. So try to visualize and connect with it. Like, why is my hand going here? Why is my head going here? Like, try your best to live in that moment. Right? And you're like this. 
and he pushes you too hard away and you're trying to stay away from these legs and he's scissoring and coming up and now you're here like this, okay? That's another scenario. Might be from a knee cut, right? You're here, you're trying to pass him over something, you cut and as he's coming up, you're dropping him, you're right here. So I'm gonna ask you to do, because what's gonna happen is, we'll attach them later to the other side, but I'm not gonna ask you to go both sides. Because what ends up happening, most players, is you marry a game one way on your passing to a different set of systems on the other side so that they intertwine really nice. And that's how you build your game. So your leg cut might be this way, but then you might do a step over on the other side and, oh, you float to the other side. So they start to mix up. They're different, okay? It's just like you tell me, like, I, I know you, unless you're really going to commit to this and, like, do this, like, 12 hours a day, you know, it's almost like writing. You're right-handed. Yeah, I get it. You could eventually write with your left hand, but you better practice for hours and hours and hours and hours. So you're going to be dominant on one side. So right now, let's play it to the side that you feel comfortable on the head and arm. We're spinning to the back side. I will give you some pointers. It's up to you if you want to follow them. I will tell you if you do not follow them, you will have some issues with high-level players and how they recover on you. You're like this. And I'm telling you that for whatever reason, you feel this uh, necessity to get behind them. That could be from IBJJ, that you want to get back there to score and get your hooks in. So you're playing this point system game. It might be that you're a great rear naked choker, or you feel like, you know what? I don't feel comfortable up here because I can't get any attachments to him. He's starting to take my hand off his chin because he's got a double grip on it. So I'm going to lose the chin line. So why would I even stay there? Because he's going to take his head out. Right, so that could be one, or I could feel like he's just too big, and I'm going, you know, my chances are better to get behind him. Okay, it could go in a lot of different scenarios, but in this scenario, we're going behind him. We couldn't collect anything up here. I feel like I'm losing his chin. I know I'm going to lose him now. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a couple of things. When you come in here and you're ready to spin around the back, try your best to transfer your head and attach to this hip. Don't do this. You're coming up like this and there's no attachment. As soon as you make this turn, he's gonna shoulder roll on you. And you had no pressure on that back hip, right? So have an emphasis that when you're transferring your head, you're pushing on that back hip. Your legs are generating into him, okay? They just can't be that he has no weight on him. I want him compressed against those back legs. Otherwise, he's gonna do other things on me, okay? He might do a, sit, a duck under onto this shoulder, Right, if I'm light on him, he's gonna duck under this shoulder and now I'm gonna go face first so he's gonna collect my ankle. Okay, so don't put your kneecaps right in front of him, otherwise he's gonna grab onto him. Okay, so I'm here and my knee lines are long and I'm pushing in and now I'm transferring to this side. Right, so I never relinquish that position here until I spin behind the back. I'm gonna tell you, they'll show you this. They'll show you to blade this over and make this turn. I hate that move because I taught fighting for a long time. So at one point, you're gonna tell me you're gonna blade this over and spin it to the backside and you're never gonna have connection on him? That's fake. That is like, that's just too sporty, okay? So my hand's not gonna blade over. I'm gonna be here and now I'm transferring my head over and I'm, I'm holding onto that neckline because I wanna know where my position is right now because he's got a couple of moves right now. He may sit back on that hip, but I had my hand position still in there, right? Until I got to the back side. So I'm here and now my hand's still in here. So now I've cleared this to this side, okay? Now I gotta take a gamble on this, right? Because now if he sits back, I can step it to the other side, but I still have my hand position in here and my head's driving. So now I'm gonna tell you what you got two counters on this right now. When you take this hand out, Right? I care about him sitting because I want to replace my head with this hand. So when I'm here and I'm taking this hand out, I understand that I wanted to replace this so that I can spin this behind him and now start making this transfer to collect this back quadrant. But to be careful at this. Now, when you take this hand out, your position to fight for that inside pocket is coming from this kneecap at this point. Because if you understand the problem solving, I want to have my safety valves in case something goes wrong on me. So right now, when I was here with this position, I, as I'm taking this, I'm okay to clear to the other side. If eight sits back on that hip line and I follow, I'm going to follow him on the, to the other side, 
right? But if I lose him too quick, right? And I was here and I'm taking my safety out of the middle, right? I better be really to, ready to flip it this way off this knee line so that I can refight him to this pocket. And if he comes back to turtle, I'm back on the same grip. I hope that made sense because you better be able to follow that man with those counters. So you got to understand what the principles are in this whole thing of why I'm taking this out, why my head position was here, why I bladed this over. Because if, if early in the equation he was biting onto my hand, with the, I'm going to lose this neck. And now he's going to bury this thing. He's going to take it out. And now I'm not ready for my safety because he's framing so hard and he's got this knee. So if you understand this larger equation of how it's going to play out, it's not going to play out well for me. Because this guy's big and strong. He's a really good black belt. And I'm like taking my safeties out. But I better know my counters. Okay? So if he sits back, that's not where I'm going with it. I was trying to give you instruction of why you were doing the things you do and why your hand positions were at certain angles and what you were trying to do in, in a bigger picture. So I'm going to ask you no more instruction on that. You're going to get behind him and you're going to give me three insertions to the backside. So when you came in here, you don't know what your insertion is. You just did all of this. You came around this turn, now you flip this, and you come in here, and you're sitting on this back quad. I need you to start practicing three different ones on this. Sometimes we drive the kneecap this way, but sometimes when I'm already here, I don't know which one's coming in first. And now I've got my first hook in. Maybe it's that one. If I get this first hook, I'm gonna have a focus on this shoulder, not this shoulder. I want to have a cross body that I'm on here right away fighting for this position. Later on, I could dig this once I have my hand position in here because then I can attach these together if I need to. I don't really care if you bite on at this point and you want to roll. I have your back, right? I have you totally your back, so it's not realistic, but I'm going to fight for this position once my first hook comes in. So now you're here this time. Okay, so this time I want you, so the first one I did this hook. Second hook, I gotta throw this guy, but now I better bury underneath here, right? Because right now I just cared about this. I'm not gonna start taking my hand out and start transferring. My hand was here, I was here, right? So my first grip is to come right back underneath. Now you gotta start fighting for your position. So once you have a wrist ride, you're gonna transfer and get your other foot up. Okay, and then on the last one, you're coming in backwards this way. So your man bottled up, right? And you're here, and now you're taking his hand out, and he's not moving, and you understand you only have one inch to go. You're ready to counter this way, you're ready to counter this way, but I want his back, right? So I'm driving my kneecap in, because if I start driving this way, right? I'm gonna stay up for a second. We're driving him backwards, because we're gonna start collecting the ACL, but I'm ready to counter three different ways. I'm ready to counter this way, and I'm ready to counter this way, okay? And then I can bring my kneecap, my hand position right in. So depending on where I am situated at this point, I can counter this every single way. You're not doing a duck under, that's not real, okay? You have the issue with the shoulder roll though, okay? So now when you're here, make sure that you're protecting this pocket because you're going to be laid on this. You're going to have your hand position here, and now he's going to clear the back of the tricep, and now you're going here, or he's going to throw over on you. Okay, so let's go in there. You're going north-south, and you're coming around the back. So those are the only two. You do, you're doing three versions of it. First and hook, second hook, right? Outside hook, now you bury underneath, right? So now you got your double grips, and now you're fighting to get this hand over you. The um, blade cut him here, or fight for your secondary hook in there. I don't think you're going to get the secondary hook in there uh, because you're going to be here with double, uh, double scoops under his armpits. You're going to have to break him down to get that in there because he's going to be so bottled up and your hand's going to be in here. You're going to have a hard time on that, right? So I'd rather you fight for position of your hand underneath so you can get these connections on top, okay? And then on the last one, you came around the turn. You did the transfers and you had a bigger picture. Try your best to visualize, okay? Just don't go through the sequences. We got plenty of time, let's perfect it. So try to visualize and connect with it. Like why is my hand going here? Why is my head going here? Like try your best to live in that moment and going all the way over here like this and then like this. You are gonna go flying. And the guy's shoulder rolls, you're never going to be able to beat him to this one spot.
because you're sitting right here, and he's going to shoulder roll. Unless you're Mika Gaval and you've got great flexibility, uh, light probability of you succeeding on the land and getting some form of double hooks in is uh, very, very, I would not bet my house or even like a slice of pizza on it. So um, it's not going to work, okay? And the reason I'm over here at this angle, because if he shoulder rolls, I want to be able to jump out and flip my knee line so that I land perfectly where he lands. I understand the outcome of the shoulder roll, right? I also want to be here, like, because I'm here and, like, trying my best to cover him. And I just saw this pocket open. I'm trying to put my knee. I saw this massive pocket. I'm going, okay, my heel's in, right? And now I'm, like, fighting to get in here because I got insertion in here already. Now I'm fighting to get in here, okay? So, um... I don't want to be sitting back here like this because you're going to be late on that one, okay? Um, so I want to be here. Um, and then secondly is, the, if the, like, so you're sitting here at this angle and you see that pocket cut and you're like this and you're sitting back here on this back quadrant and you're trying to figure out how to get your insertion. And I see this opportunity to throw my hook in. I see people trying to go into this grip. You're going to go flying and then what's going to happen is you're not, like, this guy's a big guy. He's not, you're not getting that, that easy. Make sure at this point, when, if you're going to throw this guy over, now this guy's in, this hand right away punches through under here because I got to fight to get this hand in because I want this grip because now I can hang over. Sorry, Dave. Right? I want to hang over and cut quarter Nelson, cut this. Or now I got my insertion that I'm totally covered. I am messenger bagged on you. You got an issue now that you got to get me off of you. But I am here going for rides, left or right. So I'm not hanging like a purse on one side, where all of a sudden the guy starts running, and you try to run a 40-yard dash with a handbag sitting on one side. It's going to be hard. You're holding on. The thing, you don't get an opportunity, and you want to swing your hand. The thing's going to fall off. So why wouldn't you fall off? Of course you would, right? So you, if you're throwing here, make sure you throw your hand in here. So at least, I don't know if I'm going to break them down yet. I don't even have no idea. You may end up later transferring to attack this arm or start getting some kind of neck under here, but I got to first understand like how I stay on top and stay attached. Um, so next thing is some people, when you drop this kneecap, let's not even worry about insertions at this point. I really wanted my kneecap to get back here. So, cause if I could get my kneecap in here, then I could spin this and maybe start attacking these hands or maybe start fighting to get my position in here. But what's the big deal? Like, where are you going to go? Like, are you going to sit back this way? But I have deep insert, so I'll follow you. And now I'm here, and now I still block you from the back side. Like, where are you going, right? And that doesn't matter. That's, I'm explaining this larger story because even if I don't, right, get the knee line behind this tricep, I still want the knee line here. Like, I still want connection on him. So I see some people going like this, like, like they're like this, like this. This is massive. This is massive. He's going to flare this kneecap up, and now you're, he's going to block you with this shield. Like, I want to be tight in there, okay? Next is, I know you want to flip back here. So I see people, like, going here like this, and they're, they're dropping this kneecap here, and they're going, like, this, there's a massive gap here, Okay? Once I cleared behind, I'm not telling you you have to do it this way, but if I just drop this guy super tight here, isn't this guy the guy that brings me back there? So why not take this step really big? Because if he shoulder rolls, I still can take this guy back here and catch him this way. But he's so far back that when I flip the hip, he's, this guy was sitting back here on that toe line is the guy that's going to allow this to clear back here and get perfect position back here on the stop quadrant. So why not, sh why short this leg? Why land it here like this, and now you're like this, and now you try to go like that, right? Instead of being here with this massive back step behind it, I'm going, I'm clear. I never let go of that hip. I was attached to it the whole time, right? So do your best if you want. I mean, you want to do it the other way, but then you're leaving that, you're doing that helicopter spin where there's this gap here, and now you're gonna be late on your other ones, right? I only had, once I clear this way, I only had to worry about the shoulder because I'm so far back on this line at this point that you landed this, and now where's he gonna go? 
Is he going to sit back at this point? Okay, so I'm back here going first insertion, right? It's not like if I understand how he can move, I understand all of his recoveries. So do your best like to get a, a touch here, right? I would have loved to have been in there, but it didn't work out. Maybe it does sometimes. Maybe I'm snapping and snapping and I get deep insertion. And if he's got some form of fabrics and it's G, I'm hunting that neck right away. I'm seeing if I can get one of those arteries. So I can play it, and even in a street fight, he got a jacket or something, I get it, I'm jiving in there, because if I can get one of those arteries, I got more than 50% of that blood already, because I'll catch those two backs and one artery in the front. And now I know to meet minimal, I could take this a lot of different ways at this point. If you were so far in here, let's just say, and I shot this guy through, and I'm sitting on this artery, I could just bring this guy back and sit back on this this way. I take this a lot of different ways. I could jump it over to a college, I could do this a lot, but we're not here to play gi. I'm just explaining that in a bigger picture. So try your best to get a good insertion in there or some form of a touch. That back leg, try to get that foot position really far back here because that's gonna allow you at this point, instead of doing this, you're shorting this leg and going like this, and now this massive pocket and I haven't cleared to that back side. I'm here, my, my hopefully, my kneecap's here and my kneecap's really far back. So now I dropped this position in here and I'm here and I'm clearing out, right? I'm clearing and clearing. There's no gap here. There's never a gap. And as I touch this guy, now this guy flares and I'm sitting back on his back quadrant. I never gave you the opportunity to blade me with this shin, right? I never allowed you to put it on, my sh on, on here. And I was also following it perfect that when I picked it this way and I transferred, I was like this. I was blading and blading and blading and blading. And, blading, and I attached and I covered that hip. So fundamentally, I was perfect on it, okay? So these are the type of things that, like, they're the ones that they call the invisible jujitsu. You're like, damn, I don't understand why I can't recover on that guy, you know? But he's doing everything perfect. He's not giving you opportunities to blade him. He's not giving you anything. So let's try it again, right? Try to be really connected with everything. You don't have to do it fast. Go super slow, okay? Super slow, but don't pause it. Right? It can be a millisecond at a time, but if you learn it, speed, 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 pause, speed, speed, that's how you do it. Right? So go millisecond at a time and we'll build the speed up over time. Let's rock him. So what I'm going to ask you to do is sometimes on the last one, right, you're going to get this insertion and now you can't fit this foot in and he's not moving. And he's like, he's just basically here going, I'm going to hold this line forever. And that's his whole victory. And he might be a good victory because if he's winning by two or three points, um, you know, like, and you need these hooks in, like, why does he really need to go anywhere? And his, his, his corner's yelling, you got a minute, you know, whatever. Let's say his name's Jeffrey. Jeffrey, you got a minute. Jeffrey, you got 50 seconds. Like, so, hey, we got to get this guy over. We got to break this hip line down. And he's not giving insertion. So you were like this on this last one. And you're trying to drive this knee in, and you're trying to get a grip, because sometimes if you get a grip at this, you can cantilever yourself over really far and open this guy up. And not, maybe he doesn't go over. What's going to happen is he'll lift up like this, and now I can throw that hook in. So it's sometimes, but it's more prevalent in gi, because if they, if they could put their insteps like this, you're not going to get under it. Right, so in gi, it's different. In gi, I can just grab the outside fabric and I can grab fabric out here and I can just really wench myself over the top. And now as we come up, if you are bigger and stronger, you're gonna get him over. But let's say I'm not. At least I get him to come up with his hip lines that I can throw that guy back in. But that's more with gi, so I'm gonna say that you couldn't get under here. So I'm just gonna say at this point, I couldn't get under. So I'm gonna ask you to do the three insertions from the other side. So this is what I mean by it. You're here and you're like, this guy's so bottled up and I'm here, I'm trying to drive my knee line in here. I'm trying to get it in, or I did get it in, either one, okay? Don't know which one it was, okay? So all I'm gonna do is cover this back foot. So all I'm doing is covering his back ankle. So I'm just making a barrier on the back ankle and what I'm gonna do is get to the point where I drop my right shoulder at this angle to drive to this back hip to tip this hip line over. But upon tipping the hip line over, you're going to throw this insertion as you step over on the other side. So as I was driving, right, I'm here and I'm trying to do all these things, trying to get my insertion, and then none of this is working. So I take this knee line out, and as I drive through to try to fight for position, because 
even at this point, right, when I'm starting to dry, I still wanted this hand here at this point because I don't have to worry about a shoulder roll at this point because I'm covering that back foot back here. So the shoulder roll is not realistic because if you shoulder roll, I'll hold this line here and then back step it in the center if I understand the read at that point, right? So when I'm here, I'm fighting position, I'm dropping that shoulder. But as we land and I come here, I'm coming right back this way, okay? So I'm throwing my hook in desperately to get this hook because I wanted to get position. So you're doing the same thing on the other side. You're just not starting with a north-south on the headline, right? So now as he comes up, right? We'll come up, right? As he comes up, I'm here right away throwing my secondary hook and then they go my four, right? Well, I'm going to ask you to do it and you're going to do the three sides on the other, but you're just going to start from that. So when he lands at this point, you should have been fighting here now. This is where you were. And now I'm here trying to fight. I'm trying to do this and trying to drive this thing in and none of it's working. So I'm trying to fight for position inside with my hand. I'm still going to drive it. So because so when I drive that shoulder to tip him over, as I back step, I'm looking perfect. I'm not going to have the opportunity. If this thing was low, put this thing low, lower. If, no, no, open this pocket up. If this thing was low, right away, I'm sliding up to throw my hook in. But this time he comes up, right? And he's here. Maybe I come first hook up. And now I'm back again the other way. Okay, and now you could do it on the third one where we're going back insertion on the other one, right? So I'm learning how to keep following and keep following. I'm going to fight for these hooks because I want that neck. Okay, guys, so let's partner up. Let's do it.